The storm's now arrived. Hey guys, it's Storm Boy 13. Date of filming is Friday the 10th of March 2017. Well, let's face it. Um, sorry, bad, um, bad background just then. It's actually Saturday the 11th. Yeah, it's nearly midnight. I've been um, packing stuff up. I've got a busy weekend ahead of me. So, this video is going to be a slightly rushed one. So, um, but this topic I'm going to mention on this video is the big freeze of well not to confuse you but this is the the early one December 2009 to January 2010 uh, quickly mention some of it and I'm gonna go straight through to the Wikipedia then the quick video so basically um, reason why I came up random choice um, so but basically what we had around mid-December uh, 2009 was uh, we've had this um, uh, we've had this cold, um, the jet stream was much further south as it has been for the past month of early winter. Basically that brought in a lot of um, snow, we know that from low pressure systems, you know, with the northerly flow of the jet stream bringing these arctic winds and the way the um, uh, the moisture levels were at and uh, the, of course that's the way the, um, the, it's the pressure as well. And it's just, we've just had a very... Um, uh, unlucky winter we've had because it's been quite disruptive especially early on in the season um, so I'm gonna quickly go through uh, well I definitely know uh, I was 12, 12 years old when it happened and it has definitely been the most disruptive one I ever remembered a lot of school closures severe accidents black ice uh, power cuts uh, everything really so uh, let's begin so like I just mentioned if you can read this clearly um, we know the big freeze, uh, it started on the 16th of December 2009, if you can see clearly. Uh, as we know, January 2010 was officially the coldest January since 1987 across the UK, we know. Um, and then the first snowfall began on 17th December 2009. There was a little bit of a respite over the Christmas period, but unfortunately, afterwards it got unsettled again, especially after um, New Year's Day. Um, we've also... Um, Minus 17.6 Celsius was in um, Greater Manchester, England, um, one night, um, and Southern England 6th and 7th January. So this was Southern England on 6th, uh, we've had some plenty of snow on 7th January, um, United Kingdom, yeah, so. And of course, the lowest temperature, minus 22.3 Celsius, was in Ultrana, Scotland on the 8th. So, um, just a bit of facts to tell you about it, so... Uh, let's begin. This is uh, I'm going to quickly go through this day by day. So on the um, 16th of December, uh, we've had we'd warned a very heavy snowfall to come. It wasn't much disruption on that day, although we had a very cold night. Uh, minus seven point four Celsius was recorded in Surrey. Then on the 17th, easterly winds brought more snow showers to eastern England and Scotland, um, and there has been three centimetres across Aberdeenshire, Perth. Uh, Kinross and Fife, uh, motorists on the 8th were stuck for several hours during the evening and night. And then on the 18th, um, sorry for the shaky camera, um, more heavy snow showers we know followed on the 18th after heavy overnight snow caused widespread disruption across England, uh, which was in East England, East Anglia, the East Midlands, Yorkshire and Humber, and brought further snowfalls in both the northern and southern half of the UK. And also, um, um, as we know, um, five Eurostar trains uh, were stuck in a channel tunnel after cold temperatures caused electrical failures, driving 2,000 people <laughs> for 16 hours, and also many schools in England uh, were closed. Uh, four Eurostar trains broke down inside a channel tunnel. Um, so yeah, um, conditions over 2,000 were stuck to 75,000, so it's disrupted, uh, and then. Um, Cancelled Saturday 19th December to 21st December. 
so it was only just a couple of days and it was already proven to be a very uh, chaotic event. The 19th was a little bit of a respite, uh, but also known to northern areas. It changed to a northerly with a front pushing over Scotland, 3 centimetres snow accumulated in northern Scotland, southern um, Scotland and parts of north and northeast England. Um, the 20th again, um, not the most disruptive as well. Um, winds brought snow shells to western northern and central Scotland, northern Ireland, north west, northwestern England. We know we had heavy snow showers, 15 centimetres, and uh, Glasgow had a couple of centimetres of snow lying by 9 o'clock a.m. Um, and then on the 21st, which um, some schools may not have broken up yet for the holidays, but there was further snow showers affected some parts of the UK. Uh, and yeah, loads of motor motorways went to a standstill. Uh, then on the 22nd, um, Central Scotland through Argonne through Glasgow to Edinburgh had very heavy snowfall June evening, accumulating an additional 7 centimetres. Um, and yes, we had fresh overnight snowfall, renewed problems to other parts of the United Kingdom. Um, affected. Um, paused to abandon their vehicles or slipping them overnight or becoming stuck in gridlock traffic. Gosh, I bet you did not like that over the Christmas period. Um, so that was the 22nd. I can't, sorry, I can't read all of this, but I'm literally rush, rushing at the moment. So then on the 23rd, uh, yeah. So minus 16 Celsius was in Edinburgh. Um, no, Central Islands was minus 16 Celsius. Uh, and uh, Edinburgh even went down to minus 10 Celsius. Um, and there was quite a large amount of snow fell in eastern Scotland during that day. Um, some air flights were cancelled or severely delayed until around 11.30am because of a frozen runway, not too surprisingly. Um, and then... The 24th was a little bit better. Lying snow gave some travel disruption. But as I said, Christmas Eve was a relatively calm day, however parts of North Yorkshire, uh, particularly the Harrogate area, experienced a very heavy snowfall during the day. And on Christmas Day, it wasn't too disruptive either. Parts of Britain did have a white Christmas for the first time since 2004. The snow fell in parts of Scotland, parts of North and Central England and North Wales. I seem to remember it wasn't terribly white, but not too green either, if you know what I mean. A man in Leeds, North Yorkshire, sadly froze to death after spending 24 hours in his car. 21 people had died around that time during the cold snap in the UK. North Western Ireland also had a white Christmas. Boxing Day, things got a little bit more uh, disruptive again. Uh, there was icy conditions and um, uh, there has been some harder trying to come in from the south but obviously that brought in a lot of icy problems. Um, so slippery conditions quite widely. Uh, temperatures, nighttime temperatures still remain below freezing so and there has been some power cuts been reported. 27 wasn't too bad. Parts of England suffered repeated power cuts. There was a little bit of fresh snow for overnights with a perfusure between 30 to 46 centimetres across the high of the mountains. 28th, uh, temperatures fell to minus 16 Celsius in Tundrum. Um, so, yeah, the A9 was blocked uh, following an accident. Then on the 29th, um, Temperatures dropped to minus 18 Celsius and even below Fahrenheit in parts of the Highlands overnight. Um, Britain's lowest temperature of the winter so far. Um, there's still been some icy surfaces um, continuing to disrupt. The Inverness Airport was briefly closed because of the snow and ice. Um, but um, at least the, uh, it was good for the Scottish ski industry. Best start of the season for several years, so that's a, that's a plus. But there has been more heavy snow warning for Wales, the Midlands, Northwest England, Eastern and Southern England, and Yorkshire and Humber. Uh, then on the 30th, uh, avalanche, and yeah, three people died, three large avalanches, two climbers were killed, and Ben Nevis. Um, yeah, sorry if it's slightly zoomed out, but yeah. Okay, then on New Year's Eve, uh, yeah, it led to the cancellation of Hogney celebrations in Finesse. Over public safety, uh, but the others went ahead as planned. North East Scotland um, experienced fresh snow for junior afternoon and evening on New Year's Eve. Um, and also, um, there was also um, uh, no electricity as well, or no gas for several days for around that time. Then, as we approached 2010, 
January 1st was actually quite a quiet day, mostly sunny the majority of the country, just a couple of light snow showers in certain areas. But there has been a lot of ice around on that day. Um, the second wasn't too bad. It was um, there was a few there was some snow around on the second, um, particularly in Manchester. Um, you know, with conditions in M sixty M six two two and M six six reported to be poor, but not closed. Um, Snake Pass, which links Manchester to Sheffield, however, was closed. Um, and then on the third, uh, this is where things got a little interesting. Um, we know that England Cumbria had two point four inches of snow, Edinburgh had uh, nine centimeters. Temperatures remained very cold on the third of January for Ireland and Britain, with some snow showers against Northeast England. Then on the fourth, fourth wasn't too bad. A lot of dry weather still, plenty of sunshine. Um, but uh, yeah, um, but yeah, it was just pretty cold, but nothing too disruptive. The fifth was probably the worst one out of uh, the whole month. Um, Severe weather warnings for every region in the UK. Northern Isles, however, dodged, um, so it didn't quite bore the brunt. So an extreme weather warning was issued for southern areas for overnight snowfall. Um, so we know temperatures could drop to minus 20 Celsius, um, which had on the 5th. Generally, that day, it brought in a lot of snow. We had had road grids out during the whole of the evening time. Um, And the sixth, there was just lots of school closures. Um, yeah, it's just generally been very icy. Uh, there was more snow to be reported. Um, and, it, and as we said, Scottish First Minister Alex Salmond said uh, it was experiencing its worst winter since 1963. 8,000 schools were closed on that day. And then, uh, yeah, in Kent, six inches of snow fell in four hours in the early evening and on the 7th things still didn't get much better overnight temperatures of minus 18 celsius recorded during the morning at Bensford, Oxford, Oxford, Oxfordshire and Woodford Greater Manchester in Britain over 10,000 schools closed across the UK still only some very heavy snow and disruptive transport of high of minus 8.5 degrees celsius was recorded at the log glance mob that was during the daytime uh, the 8th uh, overnight temperatures of minus 22.3 celsius was recorded on showers in the Scottish Highlands. Uh, there was more further snow across northern England on that day. The ninth still didn't improve much. Um, there was some snow drifts in Deal and Sandwich. Snow showers persisted in the east of the UK. In the Far East, snow showers moved to longer, more persistent uh, areas of snow. And also there was lots of cancellations in terms of um, the Premier League and uh, the Scottish Cup games. The majority of them were cancelled or uh, delayed or whatever. The 10th, uh, again, we still had a couple of light snow showers in central England and Wales. The maximum temperature, can you believe it, was minus 13.5 Celsius in Ultrahana and below minus 18.4 Celsius in Kinbrace. Um, with that, uh, again, uh, still some disruptive weather. Exceptionally uh, heavy and persistent snowstorms moved across Dublin. Um, Hill Kilgler and Wicklow counties. Um, slightly better on the 11th. Rain, sleet, and snow travel northwards through the early hours. All Scotland uh, in England had fears of a potential 15 feet 4.6 meters of snow drift. A low of minus 21 Celsius again was recorded in Ontario in England. Um, and on the 12th, um, it wasn't too bad on the 12th for some places, but towards the west, we've had. Trying to have milder spells of rain, but when it hit the cold air, there was some snow. Um, but yes, many schools were once again close across England and Wales. There were a few, op there were some open round then, but the M25 motorway was down to one lane uh, due to some more accidents, and of course, black ice was the main issue. Um, as I say, northern England, yeah. And there was quite a few injuries on that day. And then the 13th, uh, again, more black ice problems. The weather system continued north, affecting much north of England before reaching Scotland. The 14th, um, there was a slight change. We finally had a southerly to south easterly winds brought bands of snow to parts of uh, Scotland, affecting much northern England before reaching um, inch of snow fell in Glasgow. 
with fuel accumulations there as well, side of town cities disrupting travel. Um, and then finally, on the uh, the 15th of January, uh, milder conditions have led to falling over much of Wales, southwest England, uh, which has caused some flooding problems in some places. So it's glazed frost, which had largely gone by morning. By midday, rain showers were advancing from the south. The pre Christmas snowfall, where Jordan had half full to slush and main frozen half to solid ice over was slow to melt. Scotland melted fresh snow, and as we know, flood warnings were issued as a result. So, um, hope you heard, hope you read the um, the captions clearly. Um, so, basically, we had this prolonged cold snap across the UK, um, which was associated with uh, the jet stream, which was much further south than usual this winter. Right, that is the end of this video. Um, sorry the camera was a little shaky today uh, on this video. I've just been rushed and I'm really tired and yeah, a lot going on today. So um, so ho hopefully not too many dislikes on this video. But generally the information, you can kind of, if you do remember seven years ago, uh, yeah, a lot of events happened at the time. Um, and you know the photos, yeah, it was just... Um, could have it could have been more in a way of disruptive snow, but oh well. Um, but you know we've had a lot of uh, anti-cyclonic conditions, plenty of sunshine, but when it wasn't snowing. But yeah, there was a uh, big snow lying all across the UK. In fact, um, I remember the sixth and the seventh of January, snow actually settled completely everywhere across the UK. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Um, the storm is now out. Uh, and I'll be, um, wonder where I'll be weather forecasting on Sunday. We'll find out. Uh, I'll see you soon.